It's Friday, Friday the 13th, but Friday, and that means our first hour of the program, Senator Bernie Sanders, our national town hall meeting with the guy I think of as America's senator, although Vermont knows that he's theirs. Hey, Bernie. Hey, Tom. Great to be with you. It is great having you with us. So what's on your agenda? Well, it was a busy week uh, in Congress after the recess, August recess ended. Obviously, I think the issue on most people's minds was Syria, and I, I think we saw something really uh, extraordinarily interesting uh, regarding the pre- president's proposal uh, for uh, intervention in the Syrian civil war. And what you saw is across the political spectrum, from some of the most conservative people to some of the most progressive people in this country, you're saying, no, no, we don't want to get involved in this really bloody and complicated civil war in Syria. And I think you saw that for two reasons. Number one, there is a lot of mistrust uh, about the wisdom with regard to American foreign policy in recent years. People were lied to uh, in terms of Afghanistan, a short war. Well, that was 12 years ago. We're still in Afghanistan. Uh, Certainly in terms of Iraq and Bush's claim about weapons of mass destruction there and the loss between Afghanistan and Iraq of some uh, 6,600 brave American men and women, uh, trillions of dollars being spent, and people uh, really have serious doubts uh, uh, about that. Uh, But on top of that, I think, Tom, is that the American people are saying, you know what, our we in the middle class, we in the working class of this country, we're facing enormous problems. Uh, unemployment is really at 14%. Kids are graduating high school and college, can't find jobs. Elderly people are losing their jobs. Uh, people are losing their pensions. Uh, real income is going down for millions and millions of people. Uh, the gap between the very, very rich and everybody else is growing wider. There was just a study that came out uh, a few days ago pointing out it's just incredible stuff that uh, since 2009, between 2009 and 2012, 95% of all the new income created in this country went to the top 1%, 60% went to the top one-tenth of 1%. One-tenth wow. of 1% got 60% of the new income. So the American people, I think, were saying is, we are really mistrustful about American foreign policy in general, but more importantly, yeah, we we disgusted by uh, chemical weapons and 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 uh, the ruthless uh, dictatorship of, of Assad, and we want the international community to deal with that. But most importantly, we want the president of the United States Congress to start focusing on the issues of importance to us, create millions of jobs in this country, put our kids back to work protect Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, uh, do something about the fact that so many people are seeing a decline in their income and their wages, worry about the American people. Let's get something going. I think that is, to my mind, one of the messages out there in terms of why there was so much opposition to getting involved in a military intervention in Syria. In in my office, I have to tell you, it was about 95% of the calls and emails that we got were in opposition to that. Uh, the other I- interesting point that we're going to do, uh, show a film on, on Tuesday night in Washington, uh, and people can call my office if they live in the Washington area to get more information about it, on the Koch brothers. Uh, just a piece in the paper today uh, about uh, tax returns indicating that the Koch brothers are spending some $236 million in the last year uh, supporting a whole bunch of right-wing causes. And all of that takes us to another issue that I think all of us have got to worry about, probably the most important issue, and that is the conversion of American democracy into an oligarchic form of government, uh, where as a result of Citizens United, this disastrous Supreme Court decision, a handful of billionaire families like the Koch brothers and others are able to contribute unlimited amounts of money into the political process so they not only have huge control over the economy, economic life of this country, uh, but they also now have huge impact on politics in this America and in, in this country. So, you know, that's an issue, uh, and I'm going to continue to work for a constitutional amendment to overturn Citizens United. As I think you mentioned on your news report, uh, also this week, I'm chairman of a committee on, pr- on pr- uh, primary health care and, and aging. We held uh, a, a hearing with some really wonderful witnesses. Uh, on, on, on a crisis that gets very little discussion. There's a lot of talk about health care, 
Uh, the fact that we're the only nation in the industrialized world that doesn't guarantee health care to all people. We spend more than almost than every other country, and, and our outcomes are not particularly good. But in the midst of that whole discussion, we don't talk about dental care. And dental care is a huge, huge issue. And the bottom line is that we have millions and millions and millions of Americans. You have people, I'm sure, listening to this show right now who have major dental problems. Uh, they don't get any Medicaid coverage. They can't afford private insurance. They're not getting the care that they need. We got kids who are staying home uh, from school because they're in pain right now. Dental uh, problems are, are as serious a problem as asthma is for kids. Uh, the truth is that, that dental care and lack of dental care and, and pain the kids have uh, with tooth decay and cavities is even uh, a more serious problem. But we don't pay attention to that. So we're going to introduce legislation that will be quite comprehensive in, in making sure that more people uh, gain access to dental care in this country. Uh, another issue I wanted to say a word on is, uh, as chairman of the uh, Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs, um, right now the VA is undertaking a very good, uh, I think, outreach effort, uh, and that is to explain to veterans, we have 22 million veterans in this country, what type of uh, health care and other programs they are entitled to. Many veterans just do not know that. So I would urge them uh, to go to the VA uh, website, which has been updated recently and significantly improved. Find out whether you're entitled to VA health care uh, and what are the benefits you might be entitled to. The VA has a good uh, health care system, uh, depending upon income eligibility. Certainly, if you're service-connected, you're entitled to free health care at the VA. Uh, depending on your income level, you're entitled to either free health care or uh, modest co-payments. But it's something that veterans should explore. Uh, and my committee is now looking at a number of issues, including how we might be able to expand uh, eligibility to to the veterans of this country. So, uh, Tom, those are some of the issues uh, that we're looking at uh, in D.C. right now. Wow. Bernie, I was, uh, or Senator Sanders, excuse me, I was, I was reading the... Um the UN Charter, Article 2, Section 4, which is the one where it says that uh, a country can't bomb another country. Mm -hmm. And I discovered a... Uh, let me just read this to you. I'm curious your thoughts on this. All members of the United Nations shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. Well, I, I think the importance of that is the following. Uh, among the many concerns that I think that Americans have about getting involved in this incredibly bloody, I mean, 100,000 people have already been killed, millions have been displaced. Uh, and Tom, you know, we know that Assad is a butcher. He has made billions in his country, which is one of the poorest in the world, uh, off his own people. Uh, but on the other side, you have a significant part of the opposition we think 20, 25 percent that are Islamic fundamentalists, and a good number of them are actually affiliated with Al Qaeda. Uh, but the point that you raise is the danger uh, of, of setting a precedent or establishing a modern precedent where a country unilaterally goes to war. What does that mean in terms of the future? What do we say to China? What do we say to Russia if they suddenly invade another country to go to war? Excellent. Excellent point. Senator Bernie Sanders with us. It's our Brunch with Bernie Hour. Bernie will be taking your calls next, right after this. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Sanders.Senate.gov is Bernie's website. It is an incredible resource. Be sure to check it out. Welcome back. And Victor in Pittsburgh, Missouri, watching Free Speech TV on the Dish TV satellite network. You are on the air, Senator Sanders. Yes, good afternoon, Tom. Good afternoon, uh, Senator Sanders. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for doing the effort as far as dental. Is, uh, I, I need teeth. <laughs> uh, as far as the, 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 uh, the chemical, um, pulling out all the chemicals out of Syria, uh, I had thought about that prior to that weekend. You know, I was praying about it and I was hoping about it, and it did come true. I thank God for that. 
Um, but I also was wondering, why don't they include also biological and nuclear uh, in that? In addition to that, they should make the whole region, the whole region of the Middle East, is a powder keg as it is uh, that way. Well, obviously, uh, you know, there is, you raise a good point, uh, and um, we all know how volatile uh, the Middle East is, and, and one of the concerns that many of us have had about American intervention uh, in Syria is what the uh, unintended consequences might be in that powder keg region. Uh, and I would say that while I am obviously delighted that the United States right now has not intervened militarily, um, uh, it is going to be a hard, a lot of hard work uh, in order to secure these uh, chemical weapons. Uh, so I think right now, um, Victor, the immediate task is, yes, I would love to see us go broader than that. But right now, if, in fact, working with Russia uh working with china working with france if the united nations uh can be successful and it is not going to be easy uh in getting these chemical weapons uh out of assad's hands and into the under international supervision to be uh, ultimately destroyed that will be a huge huge step forward uh as you know there is an international convention on chemical weapons the united states and russia uh, who have the most chemical weapons are in the process of destroying their weapons. Certainly we want to see other weapons of mass destruction destroyed as well. But getting rid of chemical weapons uh, in Syria is a significant step forward. Aren't they also separate treaties that yes. they, they have come about at different times in history? But at this point, obviously, we, we want to see all weapons of mass destruction destroyed. Uh, we want to continue to be aggressive in the very difficult circumstances of trying to stabilize uh, the Middle East. So he raises the good issues, uh, but I think getting chemical weapons out of Syria right now, if we can do that, would be a huge step forward. Yeah, absolutely. We have just uh, 30 seconds before the break here, Bernie. If you had any further thoughts on that? or Well, the thoughts are, I think, that one of the reasons we are where we are right now, rather than being uh, involved in that war in Syria, has a lot to do with the American people saying, wait a second, uh, before you go into another war, uh, let's start uh, thinking about the long-term consequences of what that war might mean. Uh, you know, all of us remember Vietnam. All of us remember uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. But most importantly, I think the American people are saying loudly and clearly, we got huge problems here in the United States of America. Let's rebuild our country before we get involved in another war. Okay. In the infamous world, words of Merle Haggard, let's rebuild America first. Senator Bernie Sanders with us. He'll be right back with more of your questions right after this. Occupying the media, three hours a day, five days a week. Tom Hartman here with you. It's our Brunch with Bernie Hour. Senator Bernie Sanders on the line taking your calls. And Carol, listening on KPHX in Apache Junction, Arizona, you are on the air with Senator Sanders. Uh, thank you, Senator Sanders. Um, I wanted to talk about the wildfires we've been having out west here and what is needed is an appropriation of more money for equipment and supplies and more manpower. And it's just so unacceptable to lose so much of our forest for not having enough money. We need fleets of slurry tankers and the stations to fill them with the slurry. We need manpower, and we ought to be having our firefighters clearing areas in the off season. And it's just it's worse than penny wise and pound foolish to not fund the protection of our forest. We're turning our oxygen producers into carbon dioxide, and that's bad for the whole planet. It's worse than criminal. Could you please bring some attention to this? I know the funding arises in the House, but could you please see that some decent money is finally put in at the federal level? To Thank the you very much, Carol. Um, I agree with you. Uh, what we're seeing is an unbelievable tragedy. Uh, we have seen in recent years in Arizona and elsewhere more severe forest fires, 
uh, and more frequent forest fires. Uh, and Carol is absolutely right. Uh, these incredibly brave firefighters who are out there risking their lives need support. And she's right. We're being uh, penny wise and dollar foolish by not supporting them. And all of us remember uh, the tragic loss that the folks in Arizona suffered uh, a few months ago when, when so many of their firefighters were killed uh, in the line of duty. So she's right. Uh, the broader issue uh, is to ask why we are having uh, the kinds of firefighters, fire, uh, fire, forest fires that we're having, why we're having the kind of droughts that we're having, and I think that takes us to the other issue of global warming, and that if we don't get our act together in cutting greenhouse gas emissions, <coughs> uh, you're going to see more of that in the years to come. But Carol is absolutely right. Cindy in Studio City, California. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, what I wanted to talk about was the the situation with the chemical weapons, and something we haven't I haven't heard addressed too much. Um, in that the uh, we've used a lot of we we've been using chemical weapons for innumerable years, and in very recently in Gaza with, and I think. It seems so hypocritical of us to talk in terms of them using chem- chemical weapons and we're so incensed by it when, in fact, we have been guilty of it. And, and then they talk in terms of international law. When Bush was in, uh, in power, he dismissed inter- international law out of hand. And so, so it, I, Cindy, is there I, a question for, for Senator Sanders, sir? Yes. I, I wondered... Uh, how that hasn't gotten into the uh, into the conversation. Well, let me respond. Uh, take your second question first, and Tom and I just discussed this a moment ago. Um, if one nation decides to attack unilaterally another nation, and not in in self defense, uh, but an aggressive attack, that is in violation of international law and. Um, the United States clearly has violated that. And, and one of the reasons I was strongly opposed to the United States getting militarily intervening in, in, in Syria is precisely that. It is the kind of precedent that it says in violation of international law. In terms of chemical weapons, now, I, I think uh, the United States has not used chemical weapons in, in the same way that uh, Assad uh, allegedly has. Uh, but in fact, what many people don't know is the United States kind of looked the other way uh, when our old pal Saddam Hussein uh, was at war with Iran. And I think the evidence is pretty clear that the United States was more than aware. And in fact, some companies were supplying Saddam Hussein with some of the ingredients for chemical warfare, which he used uh, very heavily against Iranian troops and then later on against his own people. So the United States and other countries, I think, were complicit in enabling Saddam Hussein to do that, and in fact, looking the other way. Um, But having said all of that, uh, chemical weapons are absolutely terrible, and I think as a world, we've got to do everything that we can to enforce the, uh, the treaty on banning chemical weapons, and it would be a great thing for this country, for the people of Syria, and for the world. Uh, if we got chemical weapons out of Syria. Patrick in Oakland City, Indiana. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Uh, yeah, Tom. Nice, nice to talk to you. Um, Senator Sanders, I have a, my question to you is, uh, I thought at one time the Constitution reflected that the people should elect the Supreme Court justices, if I'm not mistaken. No. And how come, when did it become, I'm wrong on that, Tom? Yeah, they, they've been appointed since the founding of the country. Well, why can't they change it to the people who elect the Supreme Court justice? Because that, that, what they did with the corporations, you know, making them a person it is beyond my comprehension. I thought that was a joke. Well, Patrick, uh, I, I think, as course. Tom indicated, the Constitution is pretty clear about uh, how we go about um, nominating and approving uh, Supreme Court uh, members of the Supreme Court. Uh, But I think what we have right now is, I think most people understand, is a very right-wing Supreme Court uh, that is very attuned to the needs of big money and large corporations. And I think um, Patrick is referring to this disastrous Citizens United decision. 
in which five members of the Supreme Court a few years ago decided that corporations are people, uh, and in the name of freedom of speech, presumably have the right to buy elections. And I think the overwhelming majority of the American people uh, disagree with that ruling, and we're going to do our best to overturn it. Uh, but we are where we are right now, and I think the hope is that uh, President Obama will make strong uh, nominations uh, as those openings arise uh, to the Supreme Court, and we can turn around these right-wing decisions. It's Brunch with Bernie here on the Tom Hartman Program. Uh, it's the first hour of Friday, and Senator Sanders will be back with more of your questions on our national town hall meeting, Brunch with Bernie. Be sure to check out Bernie's website. It's a, it's a great news source. You can interact with the senator and his and his staff, and also you can sign some of his petitions and you know, just see what's going on. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. And that website, Bernie's website, is sanders.senate.gov. Welcome back to the place where despair is not an option. It's the Tom Harbin Program, our Brunch with Bernie Hour. Senator Bernie Sanders taking your calls for the hour. And, uh, Bernie, you're still here with us? I am right here. Great. Cindy in Fort Madison, Iowa, listening on AM 760 out of Denver. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Thank you uh, for taking my call. Senator Sanders, um, I have a question about the Obamacare. I was just wondering if you do sign up for that. Um, if you're self-insured, is there going to be a uh, penalty uh, assessed if you would happen to sell your home down the road? Sell your Pay home tax. down. Yeah, there's a there's a tax. I, I know the answer to this, okay. um, Cindy. There is a there's a provision that was passed as part of Obamacare that on any capital gain of over a quarter million dollars, after all deductions and everything else have been taken. There is, I believe it's 3%, it might be 1%, but there's a, a, I'm pretty sure it's a 3% tax on all the money after the quarter million dollars. And the Republicans have, have turned this into a talking point by saying that if you sell your house, you're going to have to pay an Obamacare tax on the profit. Well, yes, if the profit on the sale of your house is over a quarter million dollar profit. So that's... And we think relatively few people. Will be That's right. This is this is this is going to affect you know a thousandth of one percent. Let me just jump in on that because, and it also affects stock sales and things. You know, in terms of what's going on in in Washington right now, uh, our Republican friends uh, really have very little to say about the important issues facing our country. In fact, uh, right now, there is some question uh, whether uh, John Boehner, who's the Speaker of the House, can even get a Republican majority to go forward uh, in order to prevent shutting down the United States government. And because many of these guys, the most extreme right-wing members uh, among them, really almost don't believe in, in government at all. Uh, many of them would like to privatize or do away with Social Security, they want to make massive cuts in Medicare, in Medicaid, uh, in education. Uh, now they're focusing on Obamacare. Uh, let's be clear about health care. Uh, the United States today is the only major nation on earth that does not guarantee health care to all people as a right of citizenship. Uh, the current health care system spends in this country almost twice as much per capita on health care as do the people of any other nation, and yet our outcomes are not particularly good, and a lot of that has to do with the role that private insurance companies play. I voted for Ob uh, Obamacare for a number of reasons. Uh, not because it is my uh, desired approach. I believe in a Medicare for all single-payer program, but it was a step forward, providing health insurance to 30 million more people, putting a lot of money into disease prevention, etc. But I think the bankruptcy of the Republican Party is such that they have nothing to say. They have nothing to say about high unemployment and the need to create new jobs in this country, nothing to say about the fact that more and more uh, people are working at low wages and the need to raise the minimum wage. In fact, many Many of Republicans in the House and the Senate now believe, I know folks think I'm kidding, but I'm not, I would suspect that a strong majority of Republicans now believe in abolishing the concept of the minimum wage. 
So they don't want to raise the minimum wage. They want to do away with the minimum wage. And if people in this country are forced to work for three or four bucks an hour, that's just fine for them. So what you're seeing is these guys have nothing to say about anything important except more tax breaks for the rich, more money for the Defense Department, and what they are latching onto as their political uh, point right now, their main talking point, is Obamacare. Jim, in West Palm Beach, Florida, you're on the air with Senator Sanders. Yes, uh, I wanted to bring it uh, to uh, Senator Sanders' attention about the uh, H-1B uh, uh, visas that are being uh, promoted in this new immigration bill. And one thing I wanted to show m- more about them was, or explain more about them, was that this LCA application condition report that you have to fill out to get um, before you submit an, uh, uh, to get an HB1 visa entry into the country, you have to uh, submit a uh, labor a- uh, condition application. And I went on the line, and it used to be that all this was public information, and the uh, computer people on the Internet used to download this and start looking around, and they would find jobs by looking at this information because they'd find a company that was looking mm-hmm. for somebody. Mm-hmm. Now, what happened when Bush got in office is they took it offline. As they did a lot of things. That's just even before 9-11 they started doing this. And so what happened was we didn't know what was happening in there. So now I just looked on there. It took me a long time to find it. So in 2007, I downloaded that report of a list of all the LCA applications, and it amounted to 469,596 for just 2007. The real kicker is, is once you get in there and you start looking at all these, I mean, I never realized, like in Vermont, they, they, they don't have any uh, program analyst there. They have to bring them all in from outside the country. Jim, let me just interrupt you. I, I, I agree with the basic tenet of what you're saying, but let me kind of explain it to, to, to many of our listeners. What Jim is talking about is a program. Uh, it's a guest worker program. Uh, and this was hotly debated uh, in the immigration bill and has been hotly debated for many years. Here's the thesis. H-1B deals with higher tech uh, workers. And the thesis of corporate America uh, is that we do not have in this country uh, enough workers uh, to do computer-based type work uh, or more sophisticated work than that. And, and what's absolutely imperative is that we go abroad to other countries around the world to bring these people in. Now, on television, when you hear that, it is, don't we want these brilliant guys from China and and Russia and all over the world to come in and help us create thousands and thousands of jobs in America? Well, we do. But what most of these jobs are about are not these, you know, high-tech geniuses. These are jobs that many well-trained, well-educated Americans can do. And the point that Jim is making is that uh, under the guise of uh, having a desperate need for these workers. We're going all over the world. Many of these workers are coming into this country working at lower wages than American workers are making. So I agree with the thrust of what Jim is saying. Point being, should companies be able to go abroad if they really cannot find an American worker to do that job? The answer is yes. But in many cases, they can, A, if they're serious, about looking for an American worker, doing the advertising, doing the outreach that's necessary, and second of all, they're willing to pay for an American worker. It's a huge issue. It's not only dealing with uh, high-tech workers through H-1B. It's dealing for lower-wage workers. It's a variety of guest worker programs will allow entry-level workers. How many Americans think that we desperately need low-wage, entry-level workers to be coming into this country when we have... um, 20% youth unemployment in this country and 40% youth unemployment among the African-American communities. Uh, Many people think that it's a lot better idea to allow our kids to get some of these entry-level jobs so they can begin their careers rather than opening the doors to low-wage foreign workers. Al in Rome, Wisconsin. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Ah, Bernie. Hey, Al. How are you? Ah, could be better. Hey, I've got a big problem with the VA. Uh, what it comes down to is I can't get what I need. I can't really use what they want to give. Uh, they almost murdered me in a VA hospital. And what they did to travel pay, it makes it impossible for me to get to a hospital. 
Okay. Who the hell did this? Okay, well, Al, we, I know the issue that you're talking about, and we are rectifying it. What Al is, very briefly, what Al is saying is the VA recently uh, changed the rules uh, so that if people are going to a VA, cl- uh, VA hospital to see doctors that they've had for years, uh, what they're suggesting is they will not pay the cost of that travel, not provide the travel allowance, because they want people to go locally to a local community-based outreach clinic. Uh, Al, what we are working on is, is ending that rule if, and, and grandfathering. And if you have a doctor that you like in the medical center that you're going to, you should be able to continue going to that doctor. So that's an issue we are working on, and I think you're going to see a change in that rule. Randall in Heartland, Michigan. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Well, hi, Senator Sanders. Tom, first of all, uh, I've heard over the years that you mentioned that you were a guest in some uh, anti-war protests in uh, Lansing. Yes. I was probably a guest along with you. On Grand River Avenue in East Lansing. In East Lansing, right. Yeah. Okay. And also, you also said you used to be a midnight rock and roll disc jockey? Yeah, I was. I yeah, I did that for in Williamson. Uh, in in Lansing, I was. Uh, oh, in Lansing, okay. Yeah. Since I met somebody okay. once. Anyway, for Senator Sanders, on the news uh, uh, that Tom had, he said you were wanting to expand uh, dental coverage for uh, Medicaid patients. Yes. And I'm a I'm a dentist, and I do right now currently provide uh, care for dental patients, but I'm about to close my office because they don't pay me enough to uh, cover the costs of the procedures. And, I mean, it's very upsetting because there's a huge population that needs to be served, as you identified. Uh, what kind of measures are possible to uh, well, one of the provisions, be reimbursed? Uh, yeah, one of the provisions in the legislation that we will introduce will be to raise reimbursement rates. That is certainly one of the factors. Uh, and that, uh, so that's what has to happen. That's one of the factors that we have got to deal with. Reimbursement rates for dental care are, under Medicaid are too low. So that is one of the issues that we are going to address. But uh, one of the concerns that I have now, and, and the rates vary state by state, states make those decisions, uh, is that relatively few dentists today are serving the underserved population and Medicaid recipients. We'll be back with more of Senator Bernie Sanders' answers to your questions in Brunch with Bernie here on the Tom Hartman Program. It's 15 minutes before the hour. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. Check out Bernie's website at Sanders.Senate.gov. It is a gold mine of resources. Welcome back. Joe in Westerlo, New York. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Hi, Senator Sanders. Sanders. Um, my name is Joe. I'm from upstate New York. Not that it matters. Um, I'm wondering if there's a war is started with Syria, will it affect the, the cost of crude on the, on the world market? And my, the, reasoning I, I, the reason I'm thinking it might is because Iran is involved in this and they've threatened to do things in the Gulf of Hormuz in the past. Um, well, Joe, I think, that, about that? I think that's a very legitimate concern, and that could be one of the unintended consequences of, um, uh, of a war, an increased warfare, if you like, or American intervention in Syria. Uh, right now, uh, I could tell you that uh, gas prices uh, in the state of Vermont and many other parts of this country are very, very high. Uh, right now, we know pretty much that the oil companies can do anything they want and use any pretext. You know, uh, if it rains tomorrow, Exxon Mobil can announce that they're going to raise uh, gas prices. Um, they got away with murder, and they will continue to do that. But certainly, a war uh, or increased uh, warfare in, in in the Middle East will give them a good excuse uh, to raise prices. Vi in Donovan, Missouri. You're on the air with Senator Sanders, and thanks for watching Free Speech TV. Good afternoon, Senator. My question has to do with the Federal Reserve. There's been talk of Larry Summers being named to head the Federal Reserve, and I just wondered 
if you would support him in that position, and if not, who would be your choice to head this? You, I don't have to tell you how important the Federal Reserve is and how it could affect our uh, uh, recovery. No, Vi, thanks very much for that question, and you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I hope everybody understands that the uh, Fed is an enormously important uh, institution. And, you know, some people argue that on any given day, the chairman of the Fed may have more impact over our economy than the president of the United States does. Uh, so to answer your question, I know I will not support and not vote for Larry Summers to be chairman of the Fed. Uh, I know Larry Summers. He is a bright guy. Uh, but he was very much part of the problem. He was there along with uh, Bob Rubin, who was Secretary of Treasury under Clinton, uh, along with Alan Greenspan, who was then uh, chairman of the Fed. And these are the guys who worked a night and day in a quote-unquote bipartisan way uh, to deregulate Wall Street, to allow uh, investor banks to be uh, combined with uh, commercial banks, with insurance companies, uh, to create the too big, too big to fail situation, which we saw in 2008, which took this country uh, into the worst economic decline since the Great uh, since the Great Depression. So, no, uh, I think people like Larry Summers are part of the problem, uh, and not the direction uh, where we should be going. Who can do it better? There are a number of people out there. Uh, I'm not sure that the president would be looking at them, but you have. Economists like uh, Bob Reich, uh, who is now teaching in California. He was a very good Secretary of Labor under Clinton, a progressive economist. Uh, you have people like uh, uh, Joe Stiglitz, Nobel Prize economist. Those are two names that I brought forth who I think would understand the function of the Fed is to protect working people and not just Wall Street. We'll be back with more of Bernie right after this. Tom Arvin here with you, and it's the uh, it's our brunch with Bernie Hour. Senator Bernie Sanders taking your calls, and David in Halfway, Missouri. You're on the air with Senator Sanders. Yeah, thank you, Bernie. I was wondering if you could please like say something on the Senate floor, or get some senators to say something to President Obama about what Tom mentioned the day before yesterday about him wanting to hand out this blanket pardon to the Bush administration. You know, and we're talking about the 99% and the 1% as far as the judicial tier system is, you know, that everybody that walks away scot-free, and this is like uh, just in case anybody, you know, comes up with something, a, a pardon for just the future, you know. I was wondering if you could say something on the Senate floor or get some okay. senators to say uh, something. Tom, help me out here. What was... Uh, about a week ago, the Obama administration submitted a brief to a federal judge requesting a immunity from prosecution for war crimes for, the, I believe it was seven, the seven senior officials in the Bush administration, basically saying we just don't want this happening in the criminal court system in the United States. And I don't know if it's been ruled on or not. Uh, well, I, I don't know the details. I'm not going to refrain from, from commenting on that. But I, I think uh, clearly... Um, you know, what we know right now uh, is that at the very best, uh, there was an enormous amount of intentional misleading of the American people, uh, which got us into that war in Iraq. And I just want to say uh, one word about that. Uh, I mean, all of us mourn the loss of uh, 6,600 brave Americans, but what is not fully appreciated is it's not just the loss of life that is a result of that war, and, and that's Americans, not to mention God knows how many Iraqis and Afghanistan folks who have died in the war. We are looking, Tom, at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of men and women who have come home from Iraq and Afghanistan. I speak as chairman of the VA uh, committee, uh, who are dealing with traumatic brain injury and who are dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. And at the end of the day, what economists are now estimating is that those wars, by the time we take care of our last veteran, will cost us between 4 and 6 
trillion dollars, four to six trillion dollars, 6,600 dead, many hundreds of thousands suffering PTSD and traumatic brain injury. Cost of those wars are unbelievable. That is incredible. Uh, Sharon in Cleveland, Ohio, listening on Progressive Voices. Hey, Sharon, you're on the air with Senator Sanders. Yes, Bernie, um, Senator Sanders. I just I was listening to your show, and I wondered if the adults will be covered in your dental bill that you are proposing. I'm sorry, Sharon, say that again, please. Oh, I wondered if you, if you will be um, mentioning in your bill for dental care um, a provision to help adults get dental care. Yes, absolutely. Um, right now, um, what you have is Medicaid for lower-income Americans. Uh, Medicaid uh, covers children, uh, but the nature of the reimbursement rate is dependent upon each state. Some states do okay, other states do not. But Medicaid uh, does not cover uh, adults. Some states will do it minimally, and some states uh, will not. But we don't have mandatory coverage, and we do address that. Uh, right now, as I said earlier, Sharon, I think that this issue of dental care is an issue that does not that, that Congress and, and the White House do not fully appreciate. Uh, we uh, asked people on our email list, sanders.senate.gov is our website, just to tell us stories about the problems they're having uh, with dental care. And we had some 1,200 folks from Vermont, from all over this country, writing to us, talking about the horrendous difficulty they're having in being able to afford or access dental care. So the legislation that we're offering is quite comprehensive, uh, and it would make it much, much easier uh, for uh, adults, uh, for veterans, uh, for seniors uh, to get the dental care that they need. John in Fresno, California. You're on the air with Sen- Senator Sanders. Yeah, Senator Sanders, uh, I'd like to just uh, go back for a moment to the earlier caller about the HB1 visas. Yes. I don't know why the, the Democrats... Um, don't simply say, hey, we're big fans of the free market system, free market capitalism, just like all you right-wing Republicans. So the way we're going to solve the shortage of of high-tech workers is we're going to let the market work. We're going to let the price of engineers and scientists and all that get bid up and up, because if there's a shortage, the price of that (laughs) commodity ought to go up. And over time, the free market will solve it all. More people will go to college to get those high-paid jobs. What I'm saying is, is an interesting point. Um... And here's what he's saying, and he's right, <clears throat> is that right now uh, the theory of, of the free market is when there is a demand out there, employers will raise wages in order to attract workers. Uh, but what is happening is the way employers in corporate America are responding to that is they are saying, look, if there's a shortage, why do I want to have to raise wages? Let's just bring people from the rest of the world into the United States of America. And that way we can keep wages low. Uh, and John is absolutely right. So I think I voted for the immigration bill this time. I voted against it last time for exactly the reason that John and the previous caller had raised. I voted for it this time, expressing very strong concern about many of these guest worker programs because I was able to get into it, among other things, a billion and a half dollar program uh, for young people in this country to provide jobs for them. Plus, there are some decent provisions in the bill. But this issue of the guest worker concept, the idea that in this country today where real unemployment is close to 14%, what we desperately need is hundreds and hundreds of thousands of entry-level workers to be coming in from all over the world or high-tech workers to be coming in, I think is a lot of nonsense. And I think the more Americans learn about that, uh, the more they will be opposed to that. But John's point is right. What he is saying essentially is by opening the door to allow foreign workers to come in, what you're doing is ending the supply and demand dynamic here in this country and keeping wages lower than they should be. Senator, thanks so much for being with us today. Okay, my pleasure. It's Take great care. having you on. Senator Bernie Sanders, be sure to check out his website, sanders.senate.gov.